starts right now. First at 530, a mobile home park fire in Castroville has left one man displaced after the flames destroyed his home. Our John Paul Barajas is live at that park right now. And John Paul, there are no injuries, correct? Tim Courtney, we're off US Highway 90 and FM 471, and that's right. That's the good news. Nobody was hurt, but it was a tense couple of moments here, or a few moments for a few neighbors who were actually trying to battle the flames with water hoses until crews could arrive. And as for the man who lives in this charred mobile home, luckily he was not here when the flames broke out. Now, crews have cleared out, but Hondo, Lacoste, Rio Medina, and Castroville all responded to make sure things didn't spread out of control. We saw them knocking parts of the walls down, checking for any hot spots, and on top of using water, they sprayed what's left of the home with foam a few times as well. We did speak to a Medina County deputy and he says it's just a single trailer fire. The home is a total loss and again no one was hurt and besides some burnt grass no one else's properties were damaged. Now, we did speak to the man who lost his home. He's in relatively good spirits just thankful that nobody was hurt. He'll be staying with a friend tonight uh, and try to see where he'll go from there. We'll hear more from him tonight at 10. In Castroville, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. A man in his 20s who police say was armed and also wearing body armor was arrested last night. Bear County deputies say they caught him stealing a vehicle on the city's east side. Deputies were called out to FM 1516 North on reports of a stolen vehicle. That's where they found 24 year old James Rude rummaging through a car. When they tried to question him, he took off running. Deputies were able to catch up to him. Rude was carrying a nine millimeter that investigators say was stolen. He is currently in jail on multiple charges. The medical examiner's office has identified a man who was fatally shot at a burger restaurant last night. He is 48 year old Juan Medina. The shooting happening last night just after eight o'clock at the Good News restaurant, which used to be known as Papa's Burgers over on Southwest 36th Street. Police say Medina was leaving the restaurant when two men came up to him with a gun demanding his truck. A fight broke out with the men and they fired multiple shots. Medina was shot at least twice and died from his injuries at the scene. The investigation still ongoing. One man is dead and a suspect in custody following a shooting at a home near downtown overnight. It happened after 1130 last night on Lamar Street. Police say they received calls for shots fired and when they got to the scene, they were told a situation was going on inside of the home. A man was found shot in the living room and pronounced dead at the scene. The suspect was also in the home and was taken into custody. Charges right now are pending. Well, it was a busy morning for San Antonio police who also responded to two major crashes overnight. Our Jonathan Coto has the latest on these deadly traffic incidents. A wrongway driver on the city's northwest side was traveling west in the eastbound lanes of Bandera Road when they hit another vehicle head on at Ford's Landing. Police and EMS were called to the scene about 1.30 this morning. They say the wrongway driver died on impact. The driver of the other car was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. These westbound lanes were shut down for several hours and while police investigated the scene here, about 34 minutes later, other police units responded to this intersection off Petrenko and 151. The driver of a black pickup truck T-boned a silver vehicle. That driver was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The passenger in the silver vehicle was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say both the driver of the black pickup truck and the driver of the silver vehicle will be evaluated for driving under the influence. Either one or both could be facing charges. Both crashes are under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, fighting continues in Ukraine. Dozens killed as attacks move closer to the Polish border. Many wondering what the future will look like. Lee Waldman is live outside of UTSA for us this evening. Lee, you spoke with a professor there who believes it's going to take an awful lot to de-escalate things at this point. Exactly. How can we begin to de-escalate? What will peace look like? He said those are the million dollar questions when looking at this situation in Ukraine. Associate Professor of Political Science here at UTSA, Matthias Hofferberth, says international negotiations will play a key role. More specifically, he is focusing on how China is responding. Many have speculated China is for the invasion, but Hofferberth says they have a lot to lose here. In our conversation, he explains the Chinese are internationally sovereign, meaning other states cannot cut into their internal affairs. Hofferberg says if the Chinese allow another sovereign nation like Ukraine to have that taken away, it'll put them in some dangerous territory. He believes that's why they've been limited in their support for a peaceful resolution, but says their support is actually very key because of the Russian-Chinese relationship. It will have to be some kind of 
bilateral, trilateral effort. But I think it it it, it can be the connection um, between Xi Jinping and, and and Putin in particular, and 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 making sure that he's negotiating seriously. Hoffer Berth says he believes de-escalation is possible, but China really needs to step up here and not remain on the sidelines. At UTSA, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. And a defiant Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has said Russia will have to carpet bomb Kyiv and kill everyone there if it wants to conquer the capital city. The U.S., meanwhile, promising more aid to Ukraine, but Putin has warned armed shipments en route to Ukraine will be considered legitimate military targets. A Russian airstrike killed at least 35 people and injured more than 130 at a military facility in western Ukraine. That's just 10 miles from the border with Poland. This is the third now military facility or airfield that the Russians have struck in western Ukraine in just the last couple of days. So clearly, at least from an airstrike perspective, uh, they're broadening their target sets. Another growing problem. More than two and a half million people have fled Ukraine. Over a million of them believed to be children. A senior U.S. official saying if this continues, there could be eight to ten million refugees. Still coming up on the news at 530, it's an effort to help those in Ukraine. A local salon opening up their doors today to cut and wash hair for a good cause. After the break, why they stepped in to help. And your dose of cuteness coming your way. There's a new member hopping around the San Antonio Zoo just in time for kids heading out for spring break. We'll show you the new face when we introduce you to Poseidon right after this. A local salon opening its doors on a Sunday in efforts to help Ukraine. D'Anthony Salon and Spas usually close Sundays and Mondays, but today they made an exception. The salon opened from 10 this morning until 3 this afternoon, offering shampoos and haircuts for $30. 100% of the funds raised during the haircut drive will be going to help the people in Ukraine in the war zone. Contributions can also be made online. Just visit our website, ksat.com, for more information. All right, for those of you starting spring break, if you pay a visit to the San Antonio Zoo this week, you may notice a new little face hopping around. Poseidon, an adorable Joey born to parents Pearl and Rocky. San Antonio Zoo officials say he is about six months old. Guests can visit Poseidon in Kangaroo Crossing along with his mother and all of the other roos there. Poseidon's father, Rocky, though, was brought in from another facility to breed with the kangaroos, but has since returned to his former home. The zoo says Poseidon and the other young kangaroos Names were chosen to meet the ocean theme they've got going on there. Poseidon, of course, the Greek god of the seas. Oh, look at Tim smiling because of the little jelly. I don't know, man. It's hard not to smile. <laughs> I at. know. He was like trying not to, as if he's not allowed like to think it's cute. <laughs> it's okay, Tim. You're allowed. Smile at the baby animal. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> More of that, please. <laughs> More of that. Um, okay, well, I don't have any baby kangaroos in the forecast, but I do have some much more seasonable weather for spring break. If that's what you've got coming up this week, you'll like the forecast. I'll have it for you coming up shortly. The aquifer today is up half a foot, and in your pollen count, things look good here. Just molds and oak reported, and thankfully, both are low. Let's keep oak in the low category for as long as we can. I'll show you your forecast for the week ahead coming up. Tim smiling about baby animals. Aww. I'm smiling about the weather right now. <laughs> yeah, beautiful day to get out there. Oh, so, so nice. Zoo, oh my. anything. Yes, yeah, so nice. And if your spring break is this week, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're getting the better set of weather <laughs> than those that had no spring break last week. I didn't have a spring break either week, so I don't have any skin in the game. I'm just being honest <laughs> with you here. Low temperatures this morning. We had another widespread freeze. Some spots, though, uh, were above freezing. Catula, 36. Del Rio, 38. Everyone else, 20s, even a couple teens across the hill country. Here's your lows tomorrow morning. Not only... Are we not going to have a freeze tonight? Low temperatures will be about 20 degrees warmer tomorrow morning than they were this morning. So that means we start off in the upper 40s in the hill country, low to mid 50s elsewhere. Again, if you've got spring break this week, much more seasonable weather coming up. Our morning lows, 40s and 50s, our afternoon high, 70s and 80s. We do have a couple cold fronts coming through this week but they only affect really our humidity, and we'll talk about that very shortly. Currently, it is so nice out there. 64 Gonzales, 68 here in San Antonio, 70 in Pleasanton, sunny and 75 in Catula. Now, our dew point numbers are still low. The air still feels pretty dry out there. 
but compared to this time yesterday, our dew point numbers are up 30, in some spots almost 40 degrees. So dew points have been climbing over the past 24 hours or so, but it still feels very comfortable out there. The reason why those dew point numbers have shot up so quickly, south wind in place, breezy today, 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll have another breezy day uh, coming up tomorrow on Monday. That south wind is starting to pull in some cloud cover down to the south of Highway 90 in San Antonio. We'll see a few fair weather clouds fill in here over the next few hours. Things become overcast overnight through early tomorrow morning. I'm going to Take it off to the northwest here, right along the Rockies. Here comes our next cold front, but something to note here. This front is coming from the west coast, the Pacific Ocean. We call these Pacific cold fronts because they don't bring in cold air. They just bring in drier air and we'll have a couple of fronts like this this week to help keep our humidity on the lower side all week long. So here's the setup for this front to come through tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. We've got a lot more morning cloud cover out there and also a little bit of patchy fog will be possible after lunchtime skies clear out more sunshine tomorrow but that will make things even warmer more spots will jump into the low 80s monday afternoon front is still off to our north then late tomorrow night this will start to move through our area and there will be a chance of rain even a few thunderstorms with this cold front but only for a portion of our area areas east of i-35 notice by 10 p.m up closer to College Station, few thunderstorms starting to develop there. After 10 p.m. through about 11 o'clock midnight, we could start to see a few more thunder showers develop farther to the west along this frontal boundary. So I'm talking places like Seguin and Guadalupe County and then points east over to Gonzales County, Hallettsville, Lavaca County. You guys have the best chance to see a quick hitting shower or non severe storm as this cold front drops south. Could one of these little thunder showers build back west close or to San Antonio Bear County. Yes, it's not out of the question, but by far the best chance to see a shower or non severe storm late tomorrow night will be Seguin, Gonzales, Hallettsville, Lavaca County, and then across a portion of Wilson, Carnes, and DeWitt counties. By Time, by the time the sun comes up Tuesday morning, that front will be out of here. We'll get another day of great sunshine. So spots well to the east of 35 that do get a little bit of rain tomorrow night. A few lucky folks could get less than a quarter inch of rain. Most folks that see a little bit of rain are talking less than a tenth of an inch of rain. So it's not going to be much, but nonetheless, some of our easternmost communities could see a quick hitting shower or storm tomorrow night. Rest of the week is looking dry. Tonight, temperatures will steadily fall down to near 60 by 8 o'clock, 53 by midnight, starting to pull in some more clouds late. A gray start to the day tomorrow, but clearing will take place pretty quickly. 80 and mostly sunny tomorrow afternoon with that front coming through tomorrow night. Really, overall, very nice weather ahead this week, guys. I vote for doing our newscast outside next weekend. Oh, yeah. Ooh, let's Ooh. do it. You go build the set. Okay. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm off this week. <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew, Spurs came up short last night at home, but one of their players had a big night off of the bench. And that's right. We're talking about Jock Landale, and he hasn't gotten a lot of playing time over the last couple of games, but last night he played a lot more minutes, and he made them count with 26 points. That was a game high. When we come back, we'll hear from Landale and why he wants to stay in San Antonio. Plus, the UIW women's basketball team made history today. Got that, too. Next. the magic that was Friday night's milestone moment, the Spurs fell back to reality last night with a 119-108 loss to the Indiana Pacers. San Antonio was without Keldon Johnson, DeJounte Murray, and Yaka Pirtle for various reasons, but even without their usual starting lineup, the reserves still put up a fight. The biggest performance came from Jock Landale, who scored a game-high 26 points off the bench and attacked the rim all night long. How has Jock felt about his performance with the Spurs so far? I'm really happy with myself uh, the last five games that I've played, uh, somewhat significant minutes in because I'm just enjoying life. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad to be around the group. I'm, I feel as though I'm doing a great job on the bench trying to bring an energy to that, to bring an energy to the locker room. And, and if I get an opportunity to go in and play, I feel as though I play hard and I just do whatever I, I can to, to influence the game. So all in all, uh, I think it's been a solid year, but especially lately, I've, I'm, I'm happy with not letting the you know five games not playing affect that one game where I get you know 20 minutes. I think I've done a good job of controlling that. All right, next up the Spurs will take on the Timberwolves Monday night at 7.30 p.m.
the third straight season under head coach Alan Marcina, San Antonio FC starts with a 1-0 record thanks to an opening night shutout. Fabian Garcia scored the lone goal of their match against Detroit City FC last night in the 68th minute of play on a header while crashing to the net. Garcia played against San Antonio with Austin Bold FC for the past two seasons, and he's thrilled to be in the Alamo City scoring goals no matter how they come. I just saw the ball on the, I just tried to follow the play, you know, feel like something is going to happen. So Justin, um, he fight for the ball. Uh, I think it was Deshaun jumping, and I was just on the right time on the right spot. You know, that's just a feeling, and yeah, I can't explain. You know, sometimes it's just lucky. Like that, that was lucky on that one, but I take it. Next up, San Antonio FC hits the road to take on LA Galaxy two next Saturday at 6 p.m. Huge day in college basketball. Texas A&M men taking on Tennessee in the SEC championship. Now, the Aggies were down by nine to start the second half, and they're looking to rally. Swinging it around the perimeter to Tyrese Radford for three, and he drills it. That makes it a five-point game, but the balls were just too good today. John Fulkerson drops it off to Josiah Jordan-James, and he slams it home. Tennessee rolls to claim the title 65-50. to In women's hoops, San Antonio's Delissa Smith leads the top seed of Baylor Bears against number three Texas for the Big 12 championship. And it doesn't take long for Smith to have an impact on this one. Late first quarter, she spins and banks it in through contact. Count it and one. She would hit the free throw and finish with a game high 21 points. But the Bears didn't have the firepower to keep up with the Longhorns. Rory Harmon beats the halftime buzzer with this layup. She scored 20 to pace Texas, and the Longhorns stunned the Bears in the title game 67 to 58. Just having this experience, you're ne you're never going to forget this, you know, and and, uh, and obviously what a memorable game it was. Big congratulations go out to the UIW women's basketball team who defeated Southeastern Louisiana 56 to 52 in overtime to clinch the program's first ever Southland Conference Tournament title. The Cardinals are already heading back to San Antonio as we speak to celebrate and watch the selection show tonight for the women's tournament. We'll have a lot more reaction from the champs tonight on Instant Replay. Yesterday afternoon, the Cole Cougars saw their season end just three points shy of a repeat title in a 53-51 loss to Dallas Madison in the UIL Class 3A state championship game. Trey Blackmore led Cole with 14 points, while fellow seniors Silas Livingston and Dre Ray each finished in double figures. Those three have been the bedrock for Cole's offense over the last few years, and they paid tribute to head coach Noe Kantu after the game. Coach has done so much for us, you know, and do all the hard times and cursing and long practices and early mornings throughout these four years it just made me grow and become a grown man. I can't express how much Coach has done for me. I know I don't say it enough, but I love Coach Cantu. And um, I mean, it just sucks that now all it is is memories, but I'm grateful that I cherished all of it. After this game, even though we lost, I'll still call him. He'll still check up on me. I'll still check up on him. You know, he's still my coach at the end of the day, and I still look up to him to the man he is now. The Cougars bid farewell to six seniors who helped raise the bar of excellence on and off the court. Mark goes down. The first one knocks him to the ground. The second one nails him while he's laying on the ground. The third one hits him just to make sure he got the point. This guy is a real life Scott Sterling. All right, so if you don't know who Scott Sterling is, you've obviously missed out, but that's why YouTube's there, right? Tonight on Instant Replay, Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez, and Andrew Seeley, that's me, will celebrate 29 years of Instant Replay being on the air. I'll get you ready for March Madness as the brackets come out today. And be sure to watch Instant Replay tonight on 11 p.m. right after the night beat. It has been a crazy year. Can't wait to see how we celebrate it. Always fun to look back at some of the fun memories from Instant Replay. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. We'll be right back. Here's one more look at your day tomorrow. Much warmer in the morning with some patchy fog possible, warm and breezy by the afternoon with a high near 80. A low chance for our easternmost community to, communities excuse me, to see a little bit of rain Monday night. Rest of the week, rain-free but very seasonable with highs in the 70s and low 80s, guys. Great weather there Thursday to watch the Riverwalk turn green. Oh, yeah. Bright green, anyways. Your favorite. That's <laughs> all of our time for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight. Yes, and we'll be on on time, so you have no excuse. We'll see you then.